A sterile field is the physical area at the center of the operative site and all sterile surfaces around it. Some important principles of sterility to remember. Sterile surfaces contact only sterile surfaces. Non-sterile surfaces contact only non-sterile surfaces. Contamination of a sterile surface occurs when a non-sterile surface touches a sterile surface. For example, if the circulator's bare hand accidentally touches the surgical technologist while delivering sterile items to sterile personnel, the field is no longer sterile. The syringe. Oh, uh -oh. sorry. Contaminated. Look at your another glove. A sterile item is considered sterile only after it has been processed using methods that are proven effective. Before any sterile item is distributed to the sterile field, the integrity of the wrapper and the reading of the chemical sterility indicators must be verified. Many conditions and events can alter the sterility of the item, including puncture holes or tears in the wrapper, moisture, or failure of the sterilizer system. Sterile drapes, gowns, and gloves, and table covers are barriers between a non-sterile surface and a sterile surface. Materials used as barriers against contamination are chosen for their density, strength, ability to resist moisture, and ease of use. Materials that do not meet minimum standards for patient safety should not be used. The edge of any sterile drape, wrapper, or covering is considered non-sterile. When a sterile item is opened, the edge of its wrapper must not touch the item. Thank you. Maintaining a wide margin between the sterile item and the edge prevents possible contamination of the item as it is being delivered to the field. A one inch or two and a half centimeter margin from the perimeter of a sterile wrapper is considered not sterile. Sterile liquids in bottles with an edge or lip that is protected with a sealed sterile cap may be delivered directly from the bottle into a sterile container on the field. Medication vials often are sealed with aluminum caps. When the metal cap is pried open, the edge of the vial is considered contaminated. This is because there's no way to remove the top without dragging the non-sterile cap across the lip of the vial. When you begin to pour sterile solution into a container, do not stop pouring until the container is empty. Pull the container away from the sterile field so that no residual liquid can drip down the non-sterile side of the container into the sterile receptacle below. Never recap a sterile fluid container. If there is any doubt about the sterility of an item, consider it contaminated. Before opening the wrapper of any sterile item, inspect it for signs of contamination. Tears, holes, wear marks, or water spots on any wrapper are signs of questionable sterility. When in doubt, do not use the item. The draped patient is the center of the sterile field during surgery. Other draped items and sterile personnel form the periphery of the field. Sterile drapes create a barrier between a non-sterile surface and the working area of the sterile field. For example, the operating microscope, ring basin, and back table are draped. Equipment that is not draped must remain outside the sterile field with at least 12 inches allowed between the sterile and non-sterile surfaces. Sterile gowns are considered sterile only in front from mid-chest to table level. Sterile personnel should not drop their forearms or hands below waist level nor raise them above the axillary line. The axilla itself is considered non-sterile even though protected by a gown. This is because of the large population of bacteria in the axillary region. Sterile personnel must pass other sterile personnel back to back or front to front. Even though wraparound gowns are used in most surgical settings, the sterility of the back cannot be guaranteed because the person wearing it cannot observe it. Sterile personnel never turn their back to the sterile field. The back of a gown is not considered sterile because it cannot be observed by the person wearing it. Sterile tables are considered sterile only at table height. The top of a sterile table is the only surface considered sterile. Suture ends must not hang over the table edge. Table drapes must not be repositioned once they've been placed because this changes the level of the sterile area. Tubing, cords, and hoses that are secured to the patient drape must not be pulled up to create additional slack. This brings the non-sterile portion of the tubing up to the sterile field. 
it is the duty of the scrub to measure and allow for necessary slack before securing these items in place when they are first brought onto the sterile field. Sterile personnel remain within the immediate area of the sterile field. Scrubbed personnel must not move away from the sterile field. Sterile personnel are sometimes required to move around the periphery of the field to perform their tasks. However, moving outside the immediate sterile area is a compromise in aseptic technique. Sterile personnel should not leave the room to retrieve items from another area, even if that area is restricted. Non-sterile team members never lean over or reach over a sterile surface to distribute sterile goods to the field. When sterile packages are opened, hand items to personnel or deposit them on sterile surfaces in such a way that prevents reaching over previously opened goods. Many commercially prepared surgical items are packaged so that they can be flipped onto the sterile field from a safe distance. If the wrapper does not permit this technique to be used, non-sterile personnel must pass the item directly to scrubbed personnel. Movement is kept to a minimum during surgery. Team members should move around the operating suite as little as possible. This applies to both scrubbed and non-sterile personnel. Traffic into and out of the surgical suite creates air currents that sweep contaminated particles into the operating room. Doors to the operating room suite should remain closed when sterile supplies are opened and when surgery is in progress. Drapes and linens should be handled as little as possible and with a minimum of movement. This prevents the release of lint and dust particles, which create a vehicle for transmission of airborne bacteria. When draping a surface, always unfold the drapes. Never shake a drape to loosen or unfold it. At the close of surgery, fold or roll soiled drapes toward the center, taking care to contain the contaminants. Never drag a drape from a surface and bundle it up against your body, even if you're wearing protective attire. This spreads contaminated particles into the environment. Talking is kept to a minimum during surgery. The mouth is a major reservoir for bacteria. Talking forces the breath into the air and immediate environment. Masks worn to prevent the release of bacteria-laden moisture are not 100% effective and when improperly worn, produce little protection against the dissemination of aerosol droplets containing microorganisms. Moisture carries bacteria from a non-sterile surface to a sterile surface. When water comes in contact with a sterile drape or gown, it can cause strike-through contamination. This occurs when moisture from either side of the drape serves as a vehicle for bacteria to infiltrate the drape from the non-sterile surface. Most disposable drapes are tightly woven to prevent strike through. With continuous contact, blood and fluids can penetrate gowns and drapes. Woven, reusable drapes are treated with a chemical that resists moisture but are not completely impervious. The sterile field is created as close as possible to the time of surgery and is monitored throughout the procedure. When sterile supplies have been opened, the sterile setup is vulnerable to contamination. The longer a sterile setup remains exposed, the greater the risk of contamination. Sterile supplies should be opened as close to the time of surgery as possible. In reality, however, cases often are delayed or even canceled.